Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Air's Lair. I'm your host, Jonathan Taylor. As the more Inkalite among you might have been able to notice, I am not uh, alone in frame, because this video, as the title perhaps already gave away, is going to be a, another interview. And for the purposes of this interview, I'm gonna ask the, uh, my guest at this time to give, to give us all a self-introduction. So, if you'll please. Um, I'm Azure or L Crouch. Um, I uh, I'm a stay at, uh, mostly stay at home mom to three small humans. I also do hearing screens uh, for newborn babies, and I'm hoping this doesn't cut out again. But um, I guess I write epic uh, final fantasy type books, um, and I think that's pretty much about it. Sorry. <laughs> This thing is being weird. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, to the audience at home, I have to explain we've had some technical difficulties before we, uh, before we started, but, I've, but I'm hoping it, goes, uh, hoping it goes well now. And I think I'm not the only one who's uh, hoping. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving along. This interview might, uh, might touch upon some uh, uh, delicate aspects. Okay. So, uh, so I want to know, is there anything you don't... Uh, want to talk about it? Are there any subjects you would you would rather we avoid? Um, I guess it really depends on what you have lined up. I'm not too uh, against answering questions. I guess it, like, it really depends. Um, I guess there's uh, as long as you don't ask where I live, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I already know your time zone, and to be honest, I don't. I don't really need to know anything uh, beyond <laughs> that, as far as your location is concerned. At least not as of right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, next question. I see you got your. Uh, see you got your books lined up uh, right there behind you. Mm -hmm. I have to ask before. Uh, before you wrote uh, uh, long form fiction, did you write uh, short form fiction? I actually wrote comic books. Oh. Um, so 13th Zodiac used to be a comic book um, 20 years ago that I wrote for like a group of friends. So all of the guys were made up, but all the girls were like my friends. So we made them up a bunch of anime boyfriends for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. And uh, just out of curiosity, because uh, uh, we talked about the uh, we talked about the uh, figures and items uh, behind you. You said that mm -hmm. the you said that the guy is the uh, main character and yes yeah. Uh, was that how the was how was that how the comic itself was also framed or is that something you uh, decided to uh, rearrange when you when you when you brought it in the written form? It was rearranged. Uh, the main character used to actually be the girl, um, okay. and then he was the love interest. But after time went on his story was a lot more interesting than her story <laughs> so i made him the main character okay uh, next up uh, my my next question is what inspired you to create debut but i um, but now i kind of have to ask i'm going to have to rephrase it a little and ask you uh, how did you reach the conclusion to make it a uh, to, to turn the to turn the comics into uh, novels. So um, the reason that it decided I decided to make it into a novel is because I have a um, what was called cubital tunnel. So if you've heard of carpal tunnel, yeah. which is these three fingers, yeah. cubital is these two. Okay. And uh, what happens is they go numb and they start to hurt and it makes it really hard to draw or write for long periods of time. So actually, it's the reason why I had surgery is so I could actually do that again. Um, it was just easier to write a book than try to create a comic book. But don't get me wrong, I would love to have it be a comic book. I just can't do backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, um, uh, did, you con did you ever consider... Uh, in uh, interact, interacting with someone with a with another artist, so that you could be, so you could script it, and then someone else would uh, someone else would draw it. I considered it, but I'll be honest, I kind of want to do it myself. Except maybe I could get someone to do backgrounds because I know I can do it. I just couldn't physically because of small humans and hands. So maybe one day. <laughs> okay, maybe. Now. Uh, I, I have 
to ask, given it, uh, uh, how did you how did, how did you consider creating your uh, your characters? You said that you said that the comic was uh, uh, you know was based on you and was based on uh, your friends more or less, and mm -hmm. you and you gave them. Uh, and you gave them very, and you gave them a whole bunch of anime boyfriends. Yes. <laughs> I have to ask, uh, how did you decide those would be the guys that would uh, uh, that would uh, fit for them? Oh gosh. Um, so I had taken the girls and then kind of made their opposites, I guess, in the original comic book. Um, it's it's hard to tell. A lot of these characters that I come up with just sort of up here and decide what they want to do on their own. I know a lot of authors say that that happens, but it really is like <laughs> um, one of the guys actually became a girl in the comic book from the comic book became a girl in the book um, because it just didn't work. Like his original character, his name was Bree and he just had a thing for cheese and that's all his personality. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, he's now he's a girl who's deaf, but I don't, I don't know why that happened, but it did. <laughs> Okay. Um, and what? obviously, one of the that Jace was my anime boyfriend. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Looks like uh, well, looks like that's a uh, looks like that was a ha a uh, happy ever after. Mm, so, yeah. So well, speak. hopefully. <laughs> uh, what about the what about the rest of the world? How did you uh, uh, how did you actually uh, build that up? Well, at first it was um, what was called an Sky. I think it's a Sky um, type story, portal fantasy. Isekai, so like yes. originally, yeah. It's been a long time since I've pronounced words. Um, <laughs> but uh, originally, everything the main female character came from our world and went to the thirteenth dimension. But um, I decided to scrap that because portal fantasy was like a big thing when I first started writing, and I didn't want to be another one of those portal fa type fantasies. Um, and then I took from another story that I had written um, a couple ideas and borrowed a lot from Greek mythology for my gods. Okay. And then um, I also decided that one of the titans turned into a very large tree <laughs> called the mother tree. And I worked off a lot off of um, the elements, um, okay. fire, water, earth, air, stuff like that. Um, and try to create a whole world based onto something that is not quite our world but could have possibly been yeah and it sounds and this is everything you just mentioned pretty much sounds like it could fit into a mythology uh, but now i have to ask are your gods just as much just as just as much greedy vain dicks as the greek ones oh yes especially <laughs> time i mean she's the worst <laughs> okay Interesting that you made time female. Well, most of the times, the uh, or okay, in most other instances, mm -hmm. time, time is typically time is typically a dude. But yep. you know, props for variety, I guess. Well, she's she's also I guess she doesn't have, um, like female. She's female in the fact that she yes she like looks female, but she doesn't have any of the bits that would be there. Like she's smooth like a doll. <laughs> um, I actually chose to make her female because mostly men are depicted as Kronos or time or stuff like that. And I'm like, you know what? Time's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to ask, um, well, we talked a lot about characters so far and, you, and you've talked about characters that you've uh, altered. Are there any characters you've uh, deleted or scratched out entirely? Um, deleted wise? Uh, Jace's original dad was not the villain that he is now, nor was his name Soren. Uh, <laughs> it was Fasoy, and uh, he was kind of useless. Um, there was a whole sect of like weird star people that I had in the original comic book that I no longer exist. Um, okay. And I borrowed a bunch from another story and put them into the 13th Zodiac too. <laughs> Your, that other story you borrowed them from was your own, I assume? Yes, uh, it was called Moonlit Rain. Um, it also was a comic book that I wrote in college, so. Hmm. Okay. Um, as, for, uh, as for something more expensive now, are there any scenes that, you've, uh, uh, that you wanted to include but then, uh, but then deleted? 
Oh, yes. I had a scene where a bullet was removed from somebody. Um, it, uh, it just didn't work the way that I wanted it to. Um, I had a lot of people argue with me about the use of alcohol in wounds <laughs> and that people wouldn't do that. And I'm like, yes, they do. You know what? I'll just get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that depends. If we're talking alcoholic beverages, like... Uh, yes, know, it's not an alcoholic beverage, though. <laughs> and that's what they immediately thought was alcohol. <laughs> like, I'm going to drink it and pour it. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I could think, <laughs> though I could think of people who would actually drink straight up medicinal alcohol, but that's that's a separate that's a separate discussion altogether, uh, which I do not plan to get on to get into. Um, speaking of... Oh, what the hell? Remember, calm all the way. Honey. <laughs> okay, that's odd. Okay. Let's see if it's done. I can hear you fine. Okay, can you hear me? I don't know what the hell yes, that was. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess that was some weird feedback. Let's hope yes. it doesn't come back. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> okay, moving on. Next question. Is there, are there any, uh, talking about talking, going from deleted scenes to uh, the exact opposite, are there any scenes that you, dis that you initially didn't think necessary uh, that, you, uh, that you ended up uh, including? Or is there anything that you that as you wrote found found out it was it was actually necessary and decided to add it in uh, I had a few that were um, I had something that I had originally called a primer which was a bunch of short stories based on what had happened prior to and um, I took a handful of them and actually put them into the book as like uh, shorts or uh, flashbacks to sort of flesh out the backstory a little bit more during the book instead of just having it separate. Like the original prologue was just um, one scene and now it's the second and the original, um, Eternity wasn't born in the original, um, but now she is. And that was a short. Okay. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity, uh, if you if you wouldn't have included the primers in the um, uh, in the actual series, would you have released them as standalones? Or... I would have actually. So my additional my original plan with the primer was to actually put it at the back of the the first book. So there's still shorts in the back of the first book, but now there are less. So there's like one per character for the main like zodiac, the thirteen zodiac, instead okay. of having. Um, like the 20 or so that I had. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, hmm, that's an interesting little twist. Yeah. Uh, moving on from uh, you know from uh, details surrounding writing to uh, writing itself. What is your uh, what is your favorite aspect of writing, or what is your favorite thing to write? Oh, um, obviously, I apparently really like writing Final Fantasy type stuff because now I'm writing an urban Final Fantasy type thing, um, but. I like drafting. Um, editing is always okay, but getting that first stuff down is always more interesting. Um, but sometimes going back and going, oh yeah, that's great, or ah, oh, was I thinking? <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. You know why you know why the game series is called Final Fantasy? Yes, I do, because it was supposed to be the actual Final Fantasy. Number one was supposed to there was their last ditch effort to save the company. Uh, yeah, and instead, and turned them into some uh, very greedy bastards about thirty years later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not just that game, but uh, anyway. We're, There's we're a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're going beyond the scope of this uh, on this question. Uh, is there anything you uh, is there anything you dread uh, about the uh, about the writing process, or when it comes to uh, or when it comes to writing it? Uh, obviously, I think everybody's going to say this: editing. You know, having to go back through and cut your, kill your darlings, as they say. It's like, well, I really like the scene, but is it necessary? Yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I know the feeling. So, 
I, I have to ask, I assume you are, I assume you are entirely uh, self-published, is that correct? Yes, I am. Did, I you, did, a... did you ever consider traditional publishing? I did not, actually, because of the way that my book is formatted and written. It's um, multi-POV and not just like two, it's like 20 different people. So it's a lot of POVs and not a lot of people are going to like that. And that and it also is 113K words with 13 chapters. So okay. the chapters are thick, but they have parts in them to sort of break them down. Yeah. So yeah, I would have assumed traditional would not have liked my 13 chapters. <laughs> yeah, I can see. I could. Uh, I kind of see your point because I, you know, I, I, I know what uh, five or six thousand word chapters are like. I, yeah. Well, the, some of them were ten. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, moving along. Um. While well, while working at while working towards uh, publishing your your books, did you have any? I assume you had some uh, uh, some preconceptions about uh, uh, about the process. Were, were, well, any, were any of them proven true or false? Well, uh, my first one was obviously the cost. Like, I thought it was going to cost me a bunch of money just to get books created. And uh, before I had realized what print on demand was, or obviously for right now, I'm going through Amazon, but I intend on going wide and spread it. Um, but I really, I didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't really want to spend a lot of money. And I also learned really quickly about vanity publishers. Uh yeah the ones who are like well we'll publish it for four thousand dollars i'm like ha, ha, ha. no <laughs> yeah i know the feeling that's kind of that's one of the main things that uh, uh that also kept me out of uh, uh out, of, out of traditional publishing the possibility that i the possibility that i might get uh, that i might get scammed or that yes. i might have to uh, or that i might have to relinquish some measure of creative control that i would that that I would not be pleased with. Yes, that that was a big part. I didn't want to have to give up my my vision just because it's not mainstream. Okay. Uh, my next question, given you already have a couple of books out, I uh, I, I mean to ask you, uh, how the uh, how how did you uh, how did you receive or how did you uh, process their uh, their initial release? What 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 was it like to see? What was like what was it like to see them gathering their initial uh reception well the the first one was a um, a very uh, it was like i made this like you you're holding it it's something that you've made something that you've done in its actual book it's not just a document on the computer like i can take it off the shelf and flip through it and read it it's it's a little surreal at first the second one um wasn't actually originally supposed to exist. It was just be supposed to be standalone and sort of a, uh, well, I did it, yay, okay, and I'll move on with my life. But I didn't expect to end up with four books. <laughs> so therefore the question, uh, uh, the question uh, starts to emerge, how did it get to four books? Um, the people that I was working with on a website called Critique Match thought that I should do more. <laughs> They're like, we need more of this, make more. We need more of this story. We need to expand it. And thus it became three books. And then I had a bunch of betas ask for more of the main character, Jace's backstory. Okay. And I ended up writing the prequel. So <laughs> thus is why there are four. <laughs> I assume you're not just a people pleaser. I assume there were also some, you know, some thoughts rattling around in your, uh, in your headspace that you yeah. wanted to, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to do them justice, and I wanted to take it further than it had gone in the original comic book because their story ended up ended very quickly, um, and didn't have much beyond um, them getting to married and having kids. But um, now it's totally different past the first book. Like there's elements of the first book that were in the original comic book, um, like he kidnaps her, but I had to make it. A good thing. <laughs> oh, so, so he saves her instead. Yes, he saves her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, you uh, you already mentioned that your uh, husband is your uh, audiobook narrator. Mm -hmm. Do you, 
and do any of the other people uh, who are uh, mm, uh, who you are close to say uh, other family members or uh, friends do they know about your uh, writing career and if and if so what are, how do they how did how did they respond to it well obviously my parents know unfortunately and it's mostly kind of like oh that's you did oh okay well that's cool and uh, my dad left me a review on amazon that it was better than expected thanks dad <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I've, uh, it's kind of, I'm partially a large disappointment. I don't know, it's weird. Um, but my friends, they're from high school, were like, oh, okay, she wrote a book. And I don't know if they've read it or not. Who knows, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I, well, let's see. From, I wonder, who, I wonder how, how many people know from uh, my side as far as like uh, high school acquaintances are concerned. I've I pretty much revealed it uh, revealed it to some people but i haven't really revealed what it is uh, yeah and I, th and I think they could find out if they were if they actually if they actually searched but i'm not gonna but i don't have any reason to really you know reveal it to them at least not as of right now um okay uh next up has uh have you had during your uh you know during this uh during the whole uh, process of, you know, of uh, uh, pre-production or, uh, you know, drafting, writing, uh, publishing. Did you have any uh, teachable moments, so to speak? Did you, uh, did you, do you think you can, you've had some uh, lessons learned that you would like to, did you, did you think uh, other people should also know? Well, I've learned actually quite a bit. Um, one, how to make covers for books which is a pain in the butt when you don't know what you're doing. Um, I've learned a lot more about grammar than I ever did in high school. Um, okay. I mean, uh, when I first started writing, I didn't know how to use dialogue text appropriately. Like I was the person who would write like, quote, dialogue, quote, period, he said with capital H-E. So <laughs> I didn't know, but eventually I did learn. And now I do know. But that was like one of the big things that I just didn't know that that was one whole sentence. I thought it was separate. I don't know why I just did. Hmm. So that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. Well, there's English for you. Five languages all pretending to be uh, cohesive. Yes. <laughs> OK. Uh, next up, of the of all the questions I uh, asked of you, is there any is there any you would want to me to answer? Well, what about you? Have you learned anything about all this process? Um, I I think my I think the biggest lesson is to uh, be is to be a little more careful in how I present the uh, uh, the thoughts of my characters, because there are, there are a lot there are plenty of instances where I kind of uh, blur the lines between what is up between what is uh, observation, uh, what is thought, and what is uh, you know something that something that actually happens mm -hmm. and well that might be while that might be uh interesting to consider uh, and uh, and if you over if you overall leave it vague you're 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 not you're not giving your audience enough uh anchor points for their uh you know you know for them to for them to really uh, be be able to visualize the uh, visualize the situation so mm -hmm. That's the, so. That's where I. That's where I personally learned that I should uh, exercise a little more care. <laughs> okay. And it looks like I'm uh, uh, through with the questions. Uh, before we uh, before we close out, um, maybe you can uh, uh, maybe you can introduce uh, that uh, that gun. It looks like. Ah, my gun blade. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, this is the gun blade. It is Jace's weapon from okay. the book. My husband got it made for me. It's 3D printed. Okay. Um, it is also on the cover of the first book or the original on the original cover. I actually just updated the cover and it's still okay. there, but so nice. is Jace now. <laughs> now this is now the back cover. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, he's got a needle one. 
<laughs> that is adorable. That I made for him. So. Oh, that's that's great. Like that's seriously great. Okay. Now uh, before we close out, and I know I said this before, but I'm gonna say it again before we close out. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put your links in the description uh, anyway. But is there any? But uh, are there any links in particular that you want me to, uh, you know, emphasize? Well, Leo comes out in nine days, so the prequel, this one, comes out, which is Jace's backstory. Okay. So I this one comes out soon. Yeah, I should mention nine days at time of recording. This, this. Uh, yes. So this. July twenty fifth. Okay. So this will be a, so when by the time this will be out this uh, by the time this video will be out this uh, and the book will be a, been available for a few weeks. So. Oh, that's cool. Yep. So um, the series finale, I guess, is expected to release January thirteenth of twenty twenty three. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> so uh, that will at least be an announcement since it'll be in the future. Okay. <laughs> uh, do. Um, and do you have any other place where people can find you? Uh, mostly just on Twitter. I have a TikTok. I've neglected it severely. <laughs> um, I have an Instagram also severely neglected. I'm on <laughs> Facebook, kind of. <laughs> I'm mostly on Twitter, though. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't even have a TikTok, so... Yeah, it's... I, it's weird. <laughs> I, I have my own reasons. I'm not going to go into them right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for your time, and uh, good luck with your uh, future endeavors. Yes, you too, and sorry about the weird noise in the middle of that. Oh, well, <laughs> shit. Stuff happens. Yes. And uh, uh, thank you to the uh, audience for their attention. If there is, a, if, uh, you uh, enjoyed the following up on this interview, then uh, please, leave this, then please uh, leave a like, and maybe even share this video wherever you think other people will uh, like it as well. If you have anything you'd like to add to anything that was uh, said, the comment section awaits your input. And if you want to see when my next video gets released, well then please subscribe. And ideally also ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will ask of you in order to keep you notified. <laughs> my, own, uh, my own book, Heir to the Empire of the Next Generation, is available at most major book retailers under a master link in the description below. Right past uh, my social media, and which will be right past uh, my, uh, um, my, my guest feeds. I suggest you check out all of these links should you uh, feel so inclined. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Taylor and this has been The Air's Lair. Thank you, Azur, for uh, participating today. Thank you for having me. Okay. Bye. Great. Bye.